Connor, what's it time for? It's time for a top six list. Yeah, leave space for imaging and music. That's pretty good. Okay, that's good. All right, Connor, uh, what kind of top six list are we doing today? We are doing a top six best paced games. I think is the best way to describe that. Uh, perfectly paced. Perfectly <laughs> paced. That top alliteration. six. Perfectly paced. And please stop spitting on me. No. Um, <laughs> and you know, maybe there are our top six favorite games that have a good pace or something. You know, it, who cares, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we'll all be. Uh, we're all in a simulation anyway. Yeah. Did you hear about that? <laughs> Did you read that? Did you read that? <laughs> all right. I'm gonna get us started. Because I've got a, a, you, a you game your list that, has, to get it. <laughs> that has a, a, a paste object in the title, interestingly enough. And it's uh, Boomerang, a flip and write ah, game. Okay. Which, on the outside, it's such a fast game. And there's really not a lot of comboing happen. But the big thing that's there for me with Boomerang is one, it's quick, it's small, it, it does that sort of fulfilling thing where my yeah. perception of it matches what it pays off with. It's the interest. I'm interested in what the other player is doing. I am. I'm not so focused on my board because it's such a small thing. I'm just. I'm just covering. I'm just filling in little circles down there, right there. Right there. Oh yeah, got it. And the pace boomerang. for boomerang for me um, is really great. What's funny about boomerang? There's actually a lot of ways to score points and more things to keep track of than you think, but it doesn't bog you down because. Right. You've got, at most, seven cards to choose from. You're not going to get all the points available on every card, so you just kind of make a choice and go with it. Yep. Which is, uh, you know, Don Perini's great advice with co-op games. Just do something. Just try something. There you go. And that, that, that's a great way to keep pace going. Right. All that's right, number six. six. I'm going with my favorite game about throwing people into volcanoes, <laughs> Downfall of Pocket. There's a murderous game. Hey. Who we thrown in there? Well, Hitler. Hitler. It's Hitler. Hitler. We're throwing Hitler in. Just those dictator guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, Downfall of Pompeii is ugly, but it is uh, it's a super fun game. Uh, on your turn, you're going quick. You, you've got a handful of cards, I think mm -hmm. four, and you, you put a player down. The only thing that slows this down and keeps it from being higher on my list is there are basically, I want to say there's like three phases of the game that have entirely different rules. Mm. So you do have to like, it's kind of got some hiccups in it, but the rules speed are bumps. simple. Yeah, more like speed bumps. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's got that going, but it definitely, it moves quick. It has moments. And there you go, downfall of Pompeii. Connor's number five is behind me. I'm guessing. It's, so, it is. Got, it's a big one, actually. Really? I so I caveat. I've had I have one play of Inish under my belt. But isn't that a beautiful game? It is a beautiful game. The punch that Inish packs in the amount of time with the way that the cards play, the the like average pace of the game I think is great. Like as far as taking your turn. You've got four cards in your hand. Yeah. You're taking your turn, you're taking an action. And the game that we played was actually paced so well. I think um, part of that was like maybe because it felt like there was a clear winner at a certain point, but that didn't check me out of the game. I actually felt like there could have been a comeback. Yeah. And yeah, that was part true. of the pace was this tension. And there can be. There yeah. can be. So um, number five for me is Inish. How long do you think the average epic war game lasts? Way longer than this. This says on the box sixty minutes, and that's not a stretch. Sometimes yeah. they, they do stretch it to kind of oh, we'll do yeah. this much. This is a snappy game for what it is. It's a, it's a pretty epic war game, and those can be like, you know, people have memories of Risk and that taking right. forever too. And, I think and, it's a ninety it's a ninety minute full punch packed. Yeah, love it. Absolutely, Inish. My number five. Now, I wanted to stay away from games that were made for two players only mm -hmm. because, of course, they're going to probably have a, a better pace or at least a shorter length. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just couldn't pass up talking about Caper Europe. Mm. This game is incredible and it's snappy. And what's funny is the pace is so obviously good that what surprises you is how much you get to do. Like how much you get to like, That's oh, true. cool, I get to create points in this way and that way. And it shocks you with that because it's such a brisk, snappy game. If if you have uh, just a roommate or a, a spouse, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, who loves games, absolutely 
you should have this game. Such a simple a set of rules and actions, too, which I think 100%. contributes to pace a lot. Number four for you. Number four for me. All of these games are games that you have here, so it's great. We can show all of them. Thing. Uh, so number four, we'll you brought up co-ops. We're going to take the YouTube's best stuff. That's right. <laughs> you brought up co-ops. Um, I think The Loop is a great paced game. I almost and put it on my list. I think it's great because um, the, the part of the game that's working against you. Also fun artwork. That's right. A super fun game. The part of the game that's working against you is ramped up for a long time. I think a part of the problem that most co-ops have with their pace is that the 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 system working against you doesn't get enough stronger over time. Yeah. But with the loop, it's almost like doubling every yeah. every round. It's getting harder and harder to win. Yeah. No, that's a good one. Love it. Uh, we're gonna move it a little bit faster here. Uh, my number four is. A Reiner Knizia game, Samurai. Boop, 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 boop. What's interesting is We've got some crossover here because this is my number three, so we're just gonna knock it out. We're just gonna knock it out. Uh, Samurai doesn't always move the fastest. You can have mm. analysis paralysis, but what's this game is so tense. That was the yep. And while a person is waiting for their turn, instead of being like, uh, you might have a little bit of mm, come on already, because just because you want to see, you're. You, I, I sweat. I sweat playing this game, and like, uh, yeah. what's he gonna do? Is he gonna do? And also, you know, there's a lot of tiles that you're gonna put on the board and try to win certain areas, and da da da. But you only have five tiles at a time, so that changes also kind of what what exactly you're gonna yeah go with. Any, yeah. Any thoughts I didn't mention? No, the tension was the big thing for me. Was because turns could be longer, mm -hmm. but but there's the general understanding that this is a tense game and that every tile that I play yeah. really matters and has a big impact. So since we crossed over, why don't you go to your number three? My number three, ironically enough, themed from a sport that we referenced earlier that yep. has a slow, struggles with pace is baseball highlights 2045. I'll just say quickly, it's hard to make good board games with a sports theme, yeah. especially a theme of baseball. And this does it. And it's hard, to deck have deck builders. it's hard to have deck builders with good pace. This is both of those things, which is really interesting. Um, I'm shocked. Every time we play it, it's like, I could play this all afternoon mm -hmm. because the, it's got mini games that are so fast. And when you're done with one, you're kind of adding to your deck so you want to play with those new players. It's, it's oh, super, yeah. super fun. Yeah. Number two for me uh, is Glow. Mm, Cute little game about some... Uh, fantasical creatures and some dice rolling and the reason that glow works is the engine you're you're building it up to the point that every time you roll the dice it's inevitable that you're going to be able to do something cool and um fun and interesting yeah. on your turn and it's really that simple is you're you're getting more and more things throughout the game mm -hmm. that lend to the game getting more exciting as you go along the whole time there's some re-rolling stuff where someone's turn could take longer than other people's but Never, you, you it's use, never a bear, though. No, you use those little tokens up, and then you're, you're spending victory points to re-roll, so it's almost like if you... It's kind of fun to watch someone push their luck, so even yeah. if uh, they're taking a little longer, you're kind of like, ooh, are they going to roll again? You know, because they're losing points as they do. So, um, man, if we do a day on just beautiful board games, mm -hmm. we're going to have a lot of crossover with this list, because Vincent Dutray Boom. artwork, really nice. Yeah, and um, I'm going to go ahead and do number one, because it's not a new one. So number one for me is Baseball Highlights. And this is a game that Rodney and I have a lot of tension with because Rodney whoops me in baseball highlights every single time. But the to pace be fair, of it, to be but, fair, I do. That's true. <laughs> that's it. That's that's the end of that sentence. Um, <laughs> but the pace of it keeps me in it. Like I don't care that I've lost because the game yeah. is so quick and it actually pays off so well, even for the losing player. When games have a slow plotting pace take a really long time you build something up and then you lose especially you whooped, especially if it feels random in some way yeah that's a feel bad moment quick pace quick moving and then you lose hey let's go again and that, that's right. that's what baseball highlights us so that was my number one hit me with your number one well i, I haven't done my number two yet oh you got, got two we, we and got one screwed. we got all screwed but oh, i'll go man. fast triple crossover guys really you probably know it so here's the thing about this here's why it's a genius first game for people Mm -hmm. um, it's a big board. It could overwhelm them. Oh, what are we doing here? You're doing one of three things on your turn. You're going to take uh, two cards of, of certain colors, okay? 
um, either from Face Up or one of my favorite phrases in all of games. Give me two off the top. Love off it. the top. Love it. Give me two off the top. Um, or you're going to spend those cards to play on, you know, matching color tracks. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's all very intuitive. Or you're going to take new train tickets. But the beauty of that is, you take three, you got to keep at least one. Well, you can do that while other people are taking their turns. It's almost it's it's mm -hmm. like Sir Alan R. Moon uh, really had pace in mind when he thought about this. Train yeah. games, huge thing in board games. They take forever. Yeah, this one doesn't. And my number one, Love it. I just backed the oh, yeah. uh, uh, Deluxe Edition. It'll be here in October. It is my favorite game of all time. And uh, I've replaced it with just a piece of paper. Nice. That the says, reveal. <laughs> that says raw. It'll be prettier than this. Uh, I said auction games go slow. I don't think this one does. Here's why. You only have uh, four different like little bidding chips. You see everyone else's bidding chips. So you have perfect information throughout the game, and That's you can good. make your decision. There are some moments of eh, should I or shouldn't I, but they don't they don't take up you know they're not obtuse. They don't take up more space mm -hmm. than they should. And uh, the reason I really don't think it struggles and why I think it's such a good pace is because most of the game is actually about building up the thing you're going to bid on, and that happens so fast. You draw out of a bag, you plop it down. Everyone at the table is interested because they might want to bid on it, mm -hmm. and you're you're building up this big just this pile of stuff and yeah. it's all worth points or it could have a negative in it but you're like oh there's some points there but do i want to take the negative thing and so it's just these brisk like boom put something down you take the bag yeah. put something down you take the bag no he says raw we're bidding on it and it, it just happens just like that so auction games can really slow down raw doesn't and that's why it's my favorite game of all time maybe the perfect game <laughs> who can say listen we'll figure it out we'll figure it out because uh, I'm going to play a lot of that game. Yeah. I'm never going to sell it, Connor. You heard it here first. No. Wow. That's I love it. No, it's promise. my favorite game. It's my favorite game. All right. So. Well, guys, that's our top six perfectly paced games. I was trying to think of another P. Uh, perfectly placed. Perfectly paced player. Uh, I am just drenched in spit right now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. So yeah, thanks for thanks for tuning in to our conversation about pace to our top six perfectly paced games. That's it. Thanks guys.